I see um, a lot of familiar names, most most familiar names. Um, so this series, we've been trying and trying to get it back in person because we hear everyone wants to be in person and then we get one person. <laughs> and then as soon as we put it online, we get a lot of people. So I don't know what the if it's winter, um, but we'll keep trying. But um, when we don't get a good response, we're just going to throw it up online. So we usually have one of these every month. Next month is, I think, doing business with AI. So it's getting into a little bit more. Like, keep in mind, these are our sessions. So they're pretty basic. Um, the Small Business Development Center, as you know, for a free service. And if you want to get deeper into any of this stuff, just set up an appointment with myself or Josh. Um, and we can work one-on-one -on -one with you. So this does go pretty shallow level, um, can totally go deeper. There's probably seven subtopics within everything I'm talking about. So this is pretty general on content and social media and a little bit of using AI. Um, and then at the end, I think I'll have time we can play around with um, ChatGPT a little bit on different things that are kind of developing as we speak. Um, I wrote this about two months ago and things have changed. Um, but that's kind of the nature of where we're at right now with technology, it's crazy. Um, please use the comment section or the question section. Josh will be looking at those. Um, probably stop at natural breaks and answer questions if we have any. Um, we do sponsor this with um, Nebraska Enterprise Fund, which is a partner um, who does revolving loan funds. Um, they're an excellent partner. We work hand in hand with them um, in doing business planning. And then they have some good options for Potawatomi businesses and actually Southwest Iowa businesses um, for not low interest because nothing is low interest, um, but revolving loan funds that, that take more risks than banks do. So if you can't get funded by a bank, this is something that might work for you. Um, so Nebraska Enterprise Fund, and you can call us with any of those questions. Um, usually preparing with us or me first is where you'll start. And then I'll get you ready to apply for that, for those kind of funds, if you're interested. All right. I'm going to share my screen and screen, not my screen. Let's see. Okay, that didn't work. Okay, so Nebraska Enterprise Fund, that's their logo there. So Iowa Western Small Business Development Center, we're located at Iowa Western. And again, we help small businesses start and actually grow um, with lots of different topics. One of our specialties is digital marketing, social media, um, and have been really kind of helping businesses figure out technology in the di digital landscape um, throughout Iowa. So this is building a social media strategy with the help of AI. Josh, I can't see the comments at all. So I will stop at a natural point and see if there's any questions. Okay, I'll let you know. So I never can navigate like PowerPoint and how it takes over all my screens. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna, we're gonna, I always bore everyone by kind of going back to basics with strategy. Um, I think one of the biggest mistakes we make when we're doing social media is we kind of just jump in um, without a strategy, without a plan. Um, I'm going to post this, I'm going to post that, um, I'm going to post it here, um, nothing's happening here, so I'm going to post it there. So it is like with any kind of advertising or any kind of promotions, this isn't really advertising because we're not talking about social media advertising in this class. Like I said, that's a whole other class. Um, I think our mistake is we don't sit down and have that plan. Um, and with any kind, like I was saying, with any kind of advertising um, or promotions, it's not 
I'm going to throw this out there and I'm going to get 30 people at my doorstep or I'm going to get, you know, it's a slow roll. So it's just getting really into the, um, the habit of doing these things and having a strategy and having a plan. Um, so we're going to look into social media strategy, talk about social media channels, do a little bit of content planning and different types. Um, and then we're going to look how AI can help us with that. So first, a lot, you know, there's social media is not a new media anymore. And I think we're getting to the point that people are like, Facebook's irrelevant. Instagram's so saturated, we can't get in there. Um, I don't think that's true, but it's really doing the planning. It's definitely not true. Um, social media is kind of still in our world and there's definite strategies. I think you just need, you know, we miss the opportunity of this is easy or this is free, or we can just post once a day. Um, it is, you know, a, definitely a strategy, definitely a commitment. And the more you're committed, you know, definitely, or on what your goals are to achieve through social media. Um, but 150 minutes are spent on average by people on social media daily. Um, surprisingly, and I don't know how, but I'm over that, well, over that. <laughs> Um, forty-five percent of all internet users turn to social networking sites to research products, services, or thinking of buying. Um, so we we get online to look for things. We're looking on social media. We're asking different people for advice. We're, we're also looking at websites, um, but all of that is online. So we're trying to find a solution to our problem on social media. So you need to be there to help solve it. So the actions that um, consumers take when they follow brands on social. Um, so they they will find you on social and then they'll go visit the brand's website or their app. So it's it's very critical to, and this has always been, to not just have a Facebook page, to not just have an Instagram, because as consumers, especially local consumers, we want reinforcements that A, you are local. Um, you're not some, you know, someone in New York City in the alley pretending that you're here. Um, so we want that reinforcement of going from um, from different sites to different sites, from different social media platforms um, to your website. So having a well-versed website is definitely part of this equation, this um, equation. Um, 89% buy from the brand. So once they are on your social media and they follow you and then they go to your website, they're hooked. I mean, they're a fan of yours. So this is a captive audience. 85% choose that brand over a competitor and 84% recommend that brand to friends and family. So to me, that sounds like the dream marketing vehicle. Um, so we need to be there. I mean, that's, can't say that about billboards. We can't say that about newspapers. Um, so social media is that engagement that we can get two-way conversations going and referrals going. It's amazing. Okay, so we're going to get into part one, content strategy. Um, so you won't, just like when, if you come see me and you're starting your business, um, it's the same thing. We want to align with your business goals and values. We want to have a plan. What problem, and I say this like 50 times a day, for, for marketing, for business planning, for everything. What problem are you solving? For who? And why are you better? I always answer that question, whether it's like this post, answer that question. For my weekly strategy or my monthly strategy, answer that question. For overall, for my company, answer that question. Um. So should align with your business goals and values, and it should, um, so these are the different kinds of business goals and values. So I always look at these and I do it myself. It's like, yes, increase sales. Yes, I want brand awareness. Yes, I want customer engagement. Yes, I want lead generation. So maybe prioritize these because you really can't say no to any of them, um, but prioritize like where the cycle of your business is or what this post is or what this campaign is. This campaign is to get lead generation. This 
campaign is to encourage customer engagement. Um, so I know that you can't just focus on one, but being aware of them and aware of those goals are different of, of different cycles of your business or different months of your business. But just thinking about like what are those goals and prioritizing. And if they're all of them, you know, quantify them. Increase sales by what? Get more followers by how many? So audience targeting, who is that target audience? Um, so you want to, just like you do with business planning, do that again. I mean, this is so important to be talking to the audience. And again, you might have several different audiences. So define those ideal audiences. And by defining your ideal audiences, yes, you are leaving people out. That doesn't mean they're not welcome in your business, but this is your ideal audience. It's, it's who you've crafted your service to or bought your products for. Um, so you, you know, and if you, your ideal audience is very small businesses, can a large business use your service? Well, absolutely. But you're, but that might not be your main one. You're going to do that possibly. Um, but you're not leaving them. I just had the conversation with the client this morning. He was like, I don't want to leave anyone out. Um, I think the practice of building up an audience, building up a persona and really knowing those ideal audiences is not leaving anyone out. It's just basically making you a better business, addressing those specific problems that those audiences are having. Um, so you want to define your audience by demographics. Are they women? Are they men? Are they both? What percentage? Um, the age, again, Saying my target audience is from age one to 100 is not helpful. Can anyone in that age bracket use your business? Absolutely, but but there's definitely different problems you're solving for different age demographics. Um, psychographics, what are their interests? What are their values? What are their lifestyles? I often tell people to create a persona. So it's my target audience is Sue Pitts. She is empty nester. She, um, <laughs> um, I don't have a lot of, I was going to say church goer. Um, <laughs> Josh goes to my church and he'll probably nod his head. I haven't been there for a while. <laughs> um, but anyway, building that, that persona, what your target, your ideal audiences have. You could have more than one. I would say five, six would be pop. Um, and you're just basically it's it's that it's that target demographic and what their prob what problem you are solving, that value proposition. So doing this, like if you're in business and I think most of you are, um, making sure that you're constantly doing customer discovery, asking them feedback. What do they like about the product? Sending surveys, you know, sending emails, talking to them when they're in your store. Um, also talking to potential customers outside, just that one-on-one -on -one research and talking to customers, also talking to like vendors, possibly competitors, that one-on-one -on -one research is the best jewel of research you can do. It's where you're going to really see in this area, especially if you have a local audience, who your customer is, what's their problem and how you can solve it. And just always staying relevant. So it's really, I mean, I sounds like I'm talking about like writing a business plan, but this is just so important to visit every time you sit down and do social media strategy or marketing strategy. You can use tools for these kinds of things, like social media analytic tools, looking at your website, looking at your insights on your Facebook and Instagram to see who's visiting you the most, who's talking about you the most. If you have Google Analytics to um connected to your web page, look at those details. I mean, you kind of feel like you're looking at a foreign document, but once you start looking at it, I can also help, or Josh can help um, you understand what these things mean, but they are really important and a really good way to measure. Like if no one's going to your Facebook page, it's, you know, it's either one or two things. You're not posting the right things or they don't like your product. And I don't think that the product is the issue. 
it's you're just not posting the right things or there's no engagement or there's no likes. Um, so looking at those things as you're doing some of these strategies will help you shift and move and create different things, try different things. It's all kind of that balancing act. So I talked about this um, already, crafting your message, what problem are you solving or what needs are you fulfilling for who and what makes you better than anyone else. And this is something you wanna do for every target market. So it's basically what problem are they trying to solve? What are they searching for? So depending on what um, platform you're on, TikTok and Instagram specifically, um, and Twitter or X um, does hashtags. Facebook, not so much because Facebook is all, all kind of balanced out. On, you can do them, but if, you, if I search a hashtag, I'm only going to find posts of pages and people that I follow or am friends with. So it's not as big of a deal. Um, you don't see it as much on people's posts in Facebook, but certainly it, it doesn't hurt you. It's just not as effective. Now, when you go to Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, hashtags are super important. I can go on Instagram and search for hashtags like SBDC or Small Business Help or Iowa Small Business Help. Um, I can search for those and people that are posting about those things will show up. So people use that as a search engine. So I would sit down and kind of figure out your hashtag strategy. I always kind of call it, here's my base boiler points of my hashtags. So for me, it's SBDC because it, we are a national organization known as the SBDC. So people search for that. So it's important hashtag. Um, hashtag small business, hashtag entrepreneurship, just those basic things that I'm going to post on every post and usually in my comments. Um, so I don't take up precious um, space on the actual Instagram post. I, I'll put this in the first comment. Um, and then I'll add probably just as many more on the specific topic that I am writing about. So it might be small businesses and websites or small businesses and tax help, or it would be and tax help for small businesses, um, hashtag tax help, those kinds of things. Um, let's see. So this would be my boiler. And then I would add probably five to seven more on the specific post. So these are your common hashtags. Um, and then you want to research relevant trending hashtags. The best place to do that is just on Instagram or on TikTok. Start typing in different things. See what other people are posting. and Look at competitors and what their hashtags are using. Um, also make sure you're using location-based hashtags, especially if you're a local-only business. Now, if you consider yourself a national business, but you're trying to build your business and you're actually in Southwest Iowa, I would also include local because it's so much easier to build a business locally. It seems like if I'm a national business and I'm trying to attract billions of people, I have a much better chance, but you're so kind of lost in um, so many different people out there on social media that it's actually easy to kind of start growing locally. So I would definitely include those, those location-based hashtags in my mix of hashtags as you can see, I do up here. Um, yeah. So choosing your channels, and this is just an example. This doesn't mean like if I'm a business to business, I'm only gonna be on Instagram and X. And, I, and if I'm business to consumer, I'm only gonna be on these pages. This is just an example that maybe some business to business are going to focus a lot more on Instagram and Twitter. It's kind of more the professional space. However, Instagram is getting to be a pretty popular place for certain industries. Um, marketing being one of them and finding simple tips in art. Art is huge. Like if you're an art business um, and you're selling different things to other artists, things like that. So really do your research on your industry, call us um, and look at those. 
But once you pick your channels, focus on those until you kind of perfect them and then add another one. So having 10 right away and you haven't done a lot of social media. Um, but I do think that Instagram and, and even TikTok, I mean, we talk about TikTok being for younger people. Um, it's changing every day. I mean, Instagram back in the day, Snapchat's kind of stayed young, but Instagram back in the day was was very young and um, it's growing up. Facebook back in the day started in college and now it's known as kind of the senior citizen social media. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also for certain topics and th certain um, topics I'm on Instagram and I'm on TikTok the good thing about it is is that I can block out what I don't want to see and I can focus in on what I'm interested in and there's plenty of content out there and people are searching that way through hashtags and different things like that so I would definitely just kind of stalk your competitors, see where they are, put in keywords that are close to your business and see what's going on on these and how you can get on them. Um, but again, focusing kind of one or two at a time and getting it good. So part two, we're talking about, kind of, any questions there? No question. Okay. Part two, we're talking about content plan creation um so just in a, we were kind of talking about that above as well planning will make it smoother and easier and less time consuming um instead of like monday i have to do like eight posts just creating a monthly part of your um calendar to do the content creation and as we're going to get it down to the bottom ai will help with that it's awesome So we're going to talk about content types, talk about doing social media briefs or some kind of social media plan, layout, we call them social media briefs, um, looking at content calendars, and looking at scheduling, and also keeping in mind that all these topics could be a class in itself. So I do kind of skim the surface with some of this stuff. So content types. And... So with content types, it's really going to depend on your industry. Um, the the um, classic rule is 80-20 um, or sometimes even 90-10, meaning 90% informational, educational, or non-selling, and 10% actual promoting your business. That can vary because sometimes it depends on what people want. Like, do people want to see my um, menu or my sales every single post and my push? You know, they don't ever want a hard salesperson. But if you're in a business that's a restaurant, they probably daily want to see your daily specials. That's what they're looking for. They're hungry. They probably don't care about you educating them about how nachos can be bad for you or whatever. So it really depends. So don't hard and fast go on that rule of, of um, 80-20 or 90-10. Um, I think it's just, you wanna give people the content that they're looking for, that they're searching for. They're searching for, you know, clothes or um, black dresses or wedding dresses or whatever. That's what they're searching for, right? So, so you do wanna have that content because they're looking for that. Um, but in a lot of, especially B2B, they're not wanting the hard sell thrown down. They're looking for a solution. So you are educating them. Um, so the different types of content really, really depend. And you just need to kind of go into your business, who that target market is and what are they searching for? What do they want from you? What can you offer them? So the different content types are in information and education. So in my case, I feel like that would be my 50, 60%. I want to educate you on tips for your business. Um, I don't really want to bother you with bragging about myself um, too much. <coughs> I think you're most inter interested 
in my expertise and what I can help with your business. For humanize and connect, I would probably go 10, 20 um, and throw in some short stories that would kind of be in the same category as recognize, celebrate. Um, for promote and brag, I would probably put at the bottom of a repost a very soft, the Small Business Development Center is a free resource for you, blah, blah, blah. I have an advantage though. And again, this is another reason that you want to look at um, individual businesses. I'm free. So as I'm not a hard sell. <laughs> so we're a free service. <clears throat> but I, I think working in something in your profile or something, especially in your Instagram profile, um, would be something soft, but not like hard hitting by now or not even a CTA, um, but some, working something in a little bit. Um, for me, I wouldn't do a lot of promoting and bragging separate, um, just a little, maybe 10, maybe 5%. Um, motivate and inspire, I would probably try to do like a little bit of that, maybe 5, 10. Uh, position and lead is the same as promote brag in my mind, um, kind of the, you're selling. Um, and entertaining and engaging, pretty small, but also nice to mix in there. Um, but for the most part, for me, as a small business center director that gives um, technical assistance to small businesses, I'm going to concentrate on inform educate. And that's just for me. So that's the process that I would want you to go through. What are people searching for? And I know my small businesses want those quick tips um, that they can go and do and help kind of why you're taking this class. So here's me, here's SBDC, 50% um, inform, educate. I have a good memory. Oh, I went 30% um, with, with our success story. So featuring our clients with their permission, of course, but everyone loves to see the businesses that we work with and the awesome things they're doing. So our Recognize, Celebrate, and Humanize Connect is gonna be about our clients. Um, your, it would be your customers, a good case study, a good success story. Those are awesome. That celebratory, oh, they did that for them and that's great. Um, so a lot of times on our websites, we'll have like the logos of the people that we help. Social media is a great way to like bring those to life, bring that story to life. Oh, you worked with, I almost said Kodak, who's defunct, um, Conagra. What did you do for them? What's that real life story? Um, bring it to life. I think that's awesome. And it kind of matches up with your website. Um, and then a little bit of the promoting and bragging and a little bit of the motivation and inspiration. So these are, I just kind of put these up here. You'll see kind of the exercise I did. When I go back, I think I talk about when I go back to these things, it doesn't mean I'm just gonna do printed posts for these. Um, so for inform and educate, I might do some printed posts. I might do some videos of myself. For humanize connect, I might do some um, carousels of the story of my client or go and videotape them or do some stories. So it's kind of looking at these things and what would I do with each one of them, if that makes sense. get right past that. So this is just kind of some examples of consultants might do a lot of inform and educate, which I just went through in my little case study on the SPDC. A gym and a gym owner might do a lot of inspire and motivate along with inform and educate. A family restaurant, um, they're going to do probably, I should have put promote here. Family restaurant is going to do a heck of a lot of promoting because people want to know what their specials are how to make reservations, um, and then maybe adding in a little humanize and connect. Um, a clothing store, um, again, entertain and engage along with a lot of promotion. Um, there's a, you know, different clothing stores do really well with live sales. That's a form of social media. That's, you're selling. That's the hardest type of sale, but they do really well with it, having that access. So I think those last two are examples of where you are going to have 
um, some direct selling, but you're doing it in a way like you're humanized and connecting and you're entertaining and engaging. So it's not just um, sell, 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 but it is what people are searching for. So posting frequency from industry experts. So this is what I kind of pulled from different research on if you want to, especially if you want to like, I want to go viral on Instagram. Um, I want to be as effective as I can on Facebook. This doesn't mean that you're doing all of these. So it doesn't mean you have to do all these, but on Instagram is probably the most frequent to get going on. Um, it's a very fast paced, People follow you and they're looking at Instagram. They're kind of scrolling in Instagram um, for the people they follow. Almost like for entertainment or for a story. or So you want to be there often and post popping up with them often. Um, so three to seven posts per week on your feed. Two to five stories per day. I'm thinking, I'm exhausted. Am I just an Instagram story <laughs> or Instagram employee? It's a lot. So if you're if you're wanting to, and I'm not saying you're not going to be successful on Instagram if you don't, but this is industry experts saying for you know getting a larger either local, national, regional audience, however you're kind of positioning yourself, this is what you want to do. Consider one to three reels per week. So it's very heavy on Instagram. Facebook, Facebook is really great for for local. Um, especially in our area. Now, if you went to New York, um, it's going to the point that they're asking what's Facebook. So it just kind of depends on who you are, what age you are, and where you are. But Facebook is still very relevant in this area. We are on there. I think it's very relevant for local businesses, especially um, in Southwest Iowa, Council Bluffs, Omaha. It is very relevant. So you don't want to go too overboard. Um, Staying on brand, staying on the message, and having very quality and engaging, like trying to get those comments, um, trying to get those likes in Facebook. So thoughtfully thinking about those three to five posts. Still might seem a lot, um, but it's better than two to five stories a day on Instagram, right? <clears throat> if your audience is on Twitter, no, I'm not a Twitter person. Um, I go on there for searching every once in a while, but I'm really not on there. But if your audience, if you find that, oops, if you find that your audience is Twitter, um, at least once a day, if not five, staying on brand, um, sharing, making sure that you're giving your voice, but also sharing relevant information and um, curating content, staying on that topic. Um, LinkedIn is great for business to business. Um, I haven't done a lot. Um, so I, I'm not really practicing what I'm preaching here. Um, I, it would be very effective for the Small Business Development Center to be on LinkedIn. But as I mentioned before, we're free. <laughs> so we get a lot of, we're busy, um, but we are on there. But I, if I was going on my own, um, LinkedIn would be a great place. Thinking of it as um you know, a way to connect to business to business people looking for different things. So I would be posting one to five times a week. I would be answering Q and A's on there. I would be writing articles on there. Um, I would be checking who's following me and looking for other businesses that might like my, um, you know, I would be kind of looking for leads on there um, as much as I can. Um, and then TikTok industry experts say to get up there at least once a day, if not three times per day. Seems like a lot. So another thing, and this is a very simple, I would I would say be a little more elaborate on this, but picking the, how many times you're gonna, so let's say I'm gonna start with Facebook and I'm gonna get really good with it. I'm just gonna do that. We're gonna post five times a week. What are we posting? So just making a plan for yourself because no one else is really going to notice. So maybe it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Here we have inform, educate, motivate, inspire, entertain, engage. If it was me, I would be probably Monday, Wednesday, Friday, inform, educate, and then maybe slipping in some different things, case studies, and then something else.
and then a creative brief. So just, okay, I know where I'm going. I'm going to start with Facebook or I'm going to start on Instagram. I'm going to try to do what, you know, the one to three or um, one to five posts. Um, here's what my main goal is now. I want to get my leads. I want to get my brand out there. Of course, it's all of them, but what is that overview and goals that you want to get? Um, who that target audience is and what the key message is that you want to address maybe this month, this year, month to month. Um, what is your tone and style? What are your content formats? What is your visual elements? So these are very useful for you just to write down. And the other thing that a creative brief is very useful for is to, oops, copy paste it and put it into chat GPT. So you can say, here's my creative brief and I'm gonna show you some examples of that. Here's my creative brief. Give me some ideas for five pieces of content on Facebook a week. Here's my creative brief. And then maybe give it will shoot you out some topics on that. Um, and then you can ask it to write them. You can ask them to rewrite them. Um, and I, I'm going to show you that in a little bit. But the creative brief is great. I mean, I've, I've always said to do a creative brief, some sort of plan. Like this is, I'm not just throwing out things to put on Facebook. This is my vision. This is what I see for this particular time, for this particular message, for this particular goal. Here's what I want to get across on social media. And then now we can copy paste it into AI and it can help us save time. Here's a content calendar template. Um, this is just a sample, just Excel. Um, so you can do your week, you can make a month one, but I, I just think this is very helpful just to like spread it out there. So content type, Facebook reel, Facebook carousel, Instagram story. Um, here's the creative assets. So you can link your logo, you can link your pictures, you can link the video, you can write the copy. Here's my hashtags I'm using for this. So it's just not everyone has to use this, but it's a way to organize that plan. So you're doing it on Sunday or you're doing it on Monday. I'm going to do the whole week social media. Here's my plan. And now I'm going to go and schedule it here. <laughs> so in the way that makes you organize the best using that calendar or using another system. And then you can use Hootsuite. I think it's still free. I think up to two, it might be down to one, two platforms. I think you could do like Instagram and um, Facebook. Some of these others are paying. You can schedule on Facebook as well and Instagram you know, separately. Sometimes if you're doing a lot of it and you have several pattern, um, several platforms, excuse me, you might want to use something like a buffer or Hootsuite. Um, and that way you can just get it all scheduled. That doesn't mean that you're not going to go look at it week to, or day to day, see if people are um, sharing, engaging so that you can engage back. Um, doesn't mean that you can't like an idea pops up on Wednesday and you want to do something else, but it just takes that bulk out of it. So you're not every day, all day <laughs> doing content, excuse me. Okay, getting into AI, what time do we have? Okay, so is there any questions? Yep, I just had one question come through. Does a scheduler mess with the algorithm? No, I've never heard that um, because it's just scheduling. I mean, I think I think what messes with the algorithm is if you're scheduling, um, you know, the wrong content, or if you're scheduling and you're not going back and and personally engaging. But I've never heard that. Anyone that does a lot of posts, I guarantee you, they're scheduling. Any other questions? Nope, it looks like we're good. And and I shouldn't say no definitively, but I really have not heard that as a problem. Um, no one really knows the algorithm. 
So I, I don't know exactly, but I've never heard that. So I do this a lot. Okay. So with AI, we have, and I think, here we go. Here are the different, there's tons of them, right? There's tons of different AI things. Um, but what we want to keep in mind with AI is it's a language model. It's basically listening to your words, looking at the last word, and going to finish it based on things it's learned. It learns from the internet. It learns from backlogs and millions and millions of pages and textbooks and novels. So it has a huge learning base. However, it can hallucinate if you don't give enough information. So it's just writing. It doesn't know best. So when you're using it, the prompts are everything. So what you want to have very directed, very good prompts. And um, I'm going to also show you how you can build your own chat GPT um, personalized to your brand or anything that you want. Um, but it needs direction. For example, and I know this isn't a business planning class, but if I put in, I want a 30 page business plan on for a coffee shop in Hamilton, or I don't even know where Hamilton is, but let's just say Hamilton. Um, it will write me a 30 page business plan for Hamilton and it will just make everything up. It will just hallucinate it. They call it hallucination. Now, if I put in there maybe a document that I answered a question on what my business is about, what the prices are, I put the menus in there, I put all my research in there, and then I say write a business plan based on this, um, you know, what I'm giving you in this format or, you know, telling it very, very decisively, it will write it and it will include your information and maybe some other information that's relevant to your information. Um but just keeping in mind that anything you put in needs direction and guidance. You are the, you're leading the conversation. So generative AI tools. So large language models are the big, the big ones, right? They're the ones that learned everything. So ChatGPT is kind of the star of the show in my mind. Bard is based on um, the internet. Um, and it's Google's large language model. It's not just based on the internet, but it's a little bit more internet-y. ChatGPT 4.0 now does include the internet. So back two months ago, I would use both BARD and ChatGPT. I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, Claude is another large language model. Dolly is a large language image model based on ChatGPT. Okay, so I have these separated. There's lots of different large language models, but these are the big ones that we hear about. Jasper, I think, is another one. Um, Canva has AI, right? This is beautiful AI. I think it, um, it builds PowerPoints. Copilot is uh, Microsoft's AI. Wix has AI built into it. Logo AI. Um, Lumen5, and I don't remember what that is, but it's an AI tool, right? Or they have AI tools built in. These are using these. So Canva, the AI the tool that they have in there is using ChatGPT's large language model. Beautiful AI is using ChatGPT. So basically they have written their own prompt or prompt model. So like in the case of it's writing PowerPoints, they put coding in there. So ChatGPT can use ChatGPT and Dolly and make the PowerPoint, but they're using these large language models. I like to separate this out just because I, you know, you can do a lot with ChatGPT. These are just using, so you can do it yourself on ChatGPT if you know how to prompt. These are making it easier for you or integrating using these large language models. I say that because Pretty soon we're all going to end up in the small business world with 95 subscriptions to all these different things. So just understanding where they're coming from and what they're using and trying to pick the ones that are going to be best. Um, with ChatGPT, there is a free 3.5. I do pay the $20. I personally am going to tell you it's the best $20 I spend 
I use it all the time. I'll show you. It has a little bit more capability and it's using the internet now. Before I used the free and I used Bard and I'll show that to you in a little bit here. Um, and Dolly is, I already said that, the image one to ChatGPT. There's a lot of other image ones coming out. Bing has one. I don't talk about the image in here very much. I am mostly talking about content creation words. <clears throat> if anything, I feel like the image one is going to be the most controversial, um, replacing artists, things like that. So I'm not getting into that right now. So here's a prompt that I put into ChatGPT. I own a business in Southwest Iowa. I am a boutique collecting other small businesses' unique gifts. My mission is to offer sustainable, beautiful products made or sold by small businesses. So I'm giving it pretty details. I would probably spend more time and even give it more details. And I'm going to show you how you can do that. I would have probably even build my own GPT. I'm going to show you how to do that or where that is. But this is a prompt and it's pretty good. Okay, so now I'm going to play this little video. So this is ChatGPT, and I pre-recorded this. I'll kind of try to speed it along as I type slow sometimes in this. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Okay. So we're starting here. I That was the prompt before this. And then it answered, certainly creating social media plan for your boutique business in Southwest Iowa, blah, blah, blah. So it gives me um, some target audiences. So as I'm searching for target audiences, I'm not asking ChatGPT to answer that question. I'm brainstorming with ChatGPT. Like, oh, I didn't think of um, environmentally conscious consumers. Maybe I should look into that. You know, so it's I'm brainstorming. I'm not saying answer this question for me but it does help to brainstorm. Um, it's suggesting Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest are good places for me to be. I'm going to research that. I'm going to see who else is on there. What are they, you know, what are people posting? Um, it suggests different content themes. So I want, and then I go further. So then I asked it um, to create monthly content calendar. So it is going and breaking down January, new beginnings, February, Valentine's Day, March, spring awakening. So it's giving me different ideas to kind of separate my content into months. Um, and when you're working with ChatGPT, I'm in a chat. So it's remembering everything it said to me. So it's remembering this chat. In fact, if you can see back here, down here, I have a lot of chats going. I can go to any one of these and continue that chat and not remind him what we're talking about. Remind it, him, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I can go back to this chat anytime and just continue this conversation. And it's learning, you know, all the stuff in here, what we talked about. Um, oh, okay, messing that up. So it's going through the months. And giving me different ideas for those months. And I think Josh is going to send this PowerPoint out and he's taping, I hope. Are you? Okay. <laughs> um, it's given me key performance indicators to look at, meaning um, here's what I should be measuring. So I want to measure my follower growth, engagement metrics. So now I'm saying thank you. That is super helpful. I'd like to thank my robots. <laughs> I don't know if it's good practice or not, um, but I am polite. Some people are not. I mean, they say, no, don't be polite. <laughs> uh, let's see if I can speed this one up. Okay, so, oh, did I start over? Uh, 
the right up. So then I asked it, can, can you add the text for the post as well as great hashtags, also add image or video suggestions. So now it's writing the posts for January. So I just keep going and going, asking for more and more. It's pretty awesome. I think I asked. Yeah, it's just going month to month. So it's, well, I also put like my content. So on Fridays, I want to do this. On Mondays, I want to do this. So it's splitting it up into the Fridays and the Mondays. So you can really put your whole brief in there, what you want it to do, keep asking things. Of course, you want to go back and read these, um, change them to your voice, all of that kind of stuff. Um, it doesn't always talk like you. It, it sometimes will all of a sudden, ChatGPT will also sound like, I told Josh, he sounded, what did I tell? I think it was, he wrote a success story with the help of ChatGPT. And I said, you sound like a 1940s housewife that hasn't been out of the house in a really long time. Yeah. <laughs> so change your voice. Things, you know, figuring out things like, thanks, or um, can you please change that text to have less new nuances, less cliches, less colloquialisms, I think is the word. Um, so it's not like, sometimes it, it can write in a very prosy, nuancy way. And I think that's just, um, it, I guess a lot of a lot of the things he learned from or it learned from has that, but you can take that away, like take this out. Um, you can also just reread it and write it in your own voice. I'm going to go actually go to ChatGPT before I go on to the next slide. Do I have time here? Yeah. Um, I, I do have a question and I think we kind of just talked about it, but can you break okay. ChatGPT into groupings that has different voices, either yes. more professional versus fun? Yeah, so you can, in each conversation that you have, you can tell it, like you can even say, like a lot of people will use prompts, like you are the funniest comedian in New York City, but you're not a dirty comedian. Can you please write a recipe for, or you are a professional SEO um, prof expert that works at a company. Um, and I would like, you know, so you can kind of give it its management role or its voice in each conversation. The other thing you can do, I think I have to stop sharing. Well, I'm gonna go on to my next one and then I'll show you. Well, I can't decide. I'm gonna stop sharing quick. And... Okay. Now I lost. Oh, goodness. Am I sharing? No. Okay. Okay, there you are. I totally lost everything. Um, okay. Share again. So I do have the pro, I have ChatGPT4. To get some special tools in ChatGPT4, um, you do have to pay. So it's pro account. Sometimes they'll have, they'll kind of stop their role and they'll have a waiting list. Um, I think it took me like two weeks to get on it. So I'm not sure if they're on a waiting list right now. Um, but the one thing that you can do here is in Explorer, they have some pre-made prompts um so these are kind of pre-made prompts that they already have um one that i like is i can browse the web to help you gather information so it's a it's a specific prompt saying i just want statistics from the web leaving out all of the other types of hallucinations um you can also create your own gpt so i am exploring this i think i'll do a blog post soon on some tips for this. Um, it's pretty new, um, but you can go in and you can create your voice, your company. You can create anything you want, really. Like 
I'm trying to create a business plan assistant. I'm working on that. So basically it is telling ChatGPT every time I use this specific bot, I want it just to be in this voice. I can also add like my business plan. So it can read that. I can add my website. It can read that. I can add previous emails I've had with customers or databases. Um, so you can really make it that voice. So I, this is kind of what it looks like when you're creating one. It created this weird logo and I didn't have time to change it. Um, you name it. So I basically mine was pretty basic. I would build this out, but, oh, sorry. So I just kind of told what voice I'm in. Like I want a very casual voice. We help small businesses. We want to be quick. We want to um, give them tips that they can go do right away. We don't want it to be complicated. We want it to be in a voice that really explains things step by step. So those are the things that I put in the instructions. Um, here's my conversation starters, or I can do my own. This is the bot over here where I would put in my message. Um, I can add conversation starters or I can write my own but it's just getting that voice over here, down here. I can upload those files I talked about. Um, in here, up here, I reference my website, but here I could put my business plan. I could put the business plan guide that I wrote. I could put, you know, everything that I write in the voice that I want to talk to you, my clients as, so you could do that with your business. And then when you're using ChatGPT, use this bot and it has your voice if that makes sense. So I got quick back to the PowerPoint slideshow. Uh-oh. While you're doing that, I do have another question. Okay. Is there a limit to how many files you can upload into your custom bot? I have no idea. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're just exploring. I don't think so. Um, and if there were, then I would just create another custom bot and separate them into topics. Like here's the technical, here's the, but I, I haven't run into it, but I haven't like uploaded a ton, but that's a good question. I'll find out. <laughs> Let's see. Any others? Nope. Okay. 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 This is so annoying. Okay. All right. Here's the next one. So in this slide, I am showing you how you can use, oh, this is barred. Okay, yeah, in this slide, I'm showing you how you can use Canva along with ChatGPT. So basically, as you watch me type slow through this, not that one. So I asked it to write me the different um, posts. And then I asked it to take out all of the icons and everything so that I could easily copy paste. So I'm copy pasting this. I'm going over to Excel. I'm gonna drop these in Excel sheet. I'm going to save this as a CSV file. I'm a little slow here, typing. CSV, common separated values. And then I'm going to open up Canva. Okay, so now I'm in Canva. So I'm going to do a bulk create. And the bulk create I do here is pretty boring. 
Um, but you can do this with video. You can do this. But like, say I want to do a month's worth of motivational Facebook posts that I can just schedule up there. And then I'm going to do my videos, my deeper takes. But I just want to do this really quick. I'm going to use something. So I just picked this template. Um, and it's called Bulk Create. So I just, I'm making these smaller words, I think. Yep. So, and I'm going to put those motivational, 20 motivational posts in here and Bulk Create. And then I can go back and I can change these pictures. Like I don't want it, the same picture, but it, at least I don't have to type all those quotes and it just saves time. So we're going to go to Bulk Create. It's in your apps. In Canva, if you have Canva, um, look for Bulk Create. And then you're going to um, upload that CSV file. And then you're going to connect the data to this text box. So it just kind of walks you through. Took me a minute to figure it out. There you go. Connect data. I'm connecting there. And then I'm going to go next, continue down to that purple button. I'm going to apply all data. And I created all of them. So these aren't pretty example. I did it kind of quickly, but just to show you some really cool things going on with Canva, how you can um, incorporate different things. So the bulk create is kind of an awesome tool. It's not AI, but kind of a cool tool. So, and then here is Bing. Um, like I said, because I have ChatGPT, the Pro 4.0, it does mine the web the internet now 3.5 doesn't 3.5's data is from 2021 so you're free not three is it 3.0 or 3.5 the free one i think it's 3.5 now if i remember okay. correctly but i'm pretty sure it's still 2021 so if you're using the free one and you want up-to-date data you want to go over to bard so here with Bard, I asked, um, I'm a small business in Iowa that sells handmade and small business sustainable gifts and items. Can you look through demographic information and suggest the best target markets? I would also add to this prompt, please stay or please give me all sources that you used for these statistics so that I can go back and check them. Because we all know if this is using the internet to search, we all know there's wrong sites on the internet, right? So we want to go and check our resources. So it will list all those sources. So um, it's a very good way of speed searching Google, <laughs> of speed searching the internet. I mean, Google's still great, but this kind of points you to the right resources and gets it quick instead of like spending hours and hours reading through census.gov and trying to find that, that stuff. This is going to those sources looking at those things. So I'll kind of show you real time of what it found for me. This is very basic information, but I found some good information like on pet owners and pet licenses in Pottawatomie County for a groomer, you know, things like that that are really helpful for you to know and really helpful for your bank to know. So stop it here. If you saw before, I also asked it to find competitors. So it's searching the internet for competitors. It's probably not finding all of them, but it's finding a list of all handmade gift shops in Southwest Iowa. Kind of, I, I want to know who my competitors are. I want to go look at their information. You know, if they're across the street, I probably want to know they're there so that I don't cover the same exact things that they cover. You know, maybe I have some different categories. Um, and just also looking at how they're marketing, how they're doing, you know, all of that kind of stuff. So it is another easy way to kind of find those local competitors. Google or um, Bard or ChatGPT now can um, quickly look through and find those keywords you're kind of putting in. Like I said, it's not going to be 100% accurate, but it kind of gets you ahead of the game, saves you on some searching. 
Um, this one actually, sometimes it's surprising what it comes up with. Like it gave me a map. I can pinpoint those, kind of play around with the map a little bit. Um, but pretty cool information. All right. So it's 106. Um, if you have any questions or I, you know, we can stick around here for a little bit if you have any questions. Um, but thank you very much for coming. And next time, Josh, you want to give the date and the title of that one? Uh, that one, I believe, is March 5th. And it's okay. um, types of AI to help you with your business. So, um, no, I think it's I think it's more general AI. Yeah, sorry. I think it's anything I want to write. <laughs> <laughs> Essentially, yeah, yeah. Um, so it probably it will probably be going through one of the things that we will do in that class is go through creating your own GPT, um, and I'll be exploring that a little bit more. Um, among other things, different ideas for how to run your business through ChatGPT. Um, I'm learning all sorts of different things. In fact, a friend of mine, um, Tandemworks, just had a great one, a great AI class. Um, and she has created a tool because they do a lot of whiteboarding for strategy. So she created a, a chat GPT that can actually take a picture of her whiteboard after a strategy session and um, put it into written form. So photo, it reads the photo and it writes it down. So you don't have to transpose those notes, which is just such a time saver and a, you know, super thinking minor thing, but huge thing to, especially if you do a lot of whiteboarding for strategy sessions. Um, so we'll be going into that. Any other questions? Nope, I don't see any other questions. Okay, well, I encourage you guys to call me if you have any questions on this or if you have anything else you want to work on. Um, we'll be making sure that you're on that list to get the information about the next class um, with more details on what we'll be covering on that. And I think, is that in person? I haven't said in person for right now. So Okay, <laughs> it's probably online. We'll probably go online with that one. So we'll be putting up that information probably this week. So, all right. Well, thank you, everyone. And again, if you have any questions, shoot me an email or give me a call, and I'd be happy to work with you.